So in terms of my CIR journey, I must say it's a long one. It's almost half of my life with the CIR. I started as being a member of the Egyptian branch back in 1998, then rising to become a committee member for the branch, then moving to become a branch vice chair, then becoming a member of the board of management for the institute at large, elected to become a member of the board of trustees for the MENA and India subcontinent, and then taking Halma's presidency in 2025. Along the way, I've also taken on the role of a tutor, the director of the Oxford Diploma, helped with the development and drafting of guidelines that are at the forefront of thought leadership in the ADR community today. And so half of my life has been with the CIR, and I truly cherish that very much. What does the CIR mean to me? In, in few words, I would say thought leadership, capacity building, integrity and ethics. CIR as a global community and a global powerhouse helps with the policy making of developing best practices in ADR. So that's the thought leadership aspect. One is taught and learns that you don't do just your work professionally, but how you do that elegantly with ethics and integrity. An emphasis on ethics and integrity cannot be overemphasized because it really goes to the legitimacy of all what we do. In terms of being the first president from Egypt, and I must say also for Africa, it's a great deal. I don't take that lightly or for granted. Those who voted and supported my presidency are certainly appreciated. And as a president, you're the president for all the CIRB, not just regions alone. But I think the MENA region and Africa have had growing importance for the CIR, and certainly the new branch in Saudi Arabia signals a new era where we will have more and more dispute resolvers and neutrals from that region, from Africa, and in addition to that, other regions as well, like Latin America and Asia. So what that means is that we will be able to enrich the dispute resolution world with more and more diverse professionals from distant localities and regions that were not previously on the world map as having a significant percentage of dispute resolvers. I must say the most important thing in terms of ADR is the open door policy. Previously when one started, the ADR world was not very open and now it has opened up in terms of membership of institutions, in terms of the diversity of professionals, in terms of the consciousness of the importance of bringing a truly diverse set of skills. And that has enabled people more and more to pour in the dispute resolution world. Contrary to what many people think, that there is a saturation. I always think there is always room for good, qualified professionals. And so to that extent, I think the world is changing and has changed with this open door policy. So in terms of the challenges that the CIR will face, like many other great institutions worldwide, with the increase in the number of members, how can you cater for the needs and interests of diverse membership? It also comes into the mix, the technology and the artificial intelligence. So how can we maintain the tradition of top quality trainings while ensuring that there is a degree of innovation of integrating the use of technology and teaching people of how technology, which is transforming the lives of many, if not all, can be integrated into dispute resolution processes. In terms of the opportunities the CIRB has, I think the sky is the limit. The world is not devoid of practitioners, so everyone needs training, everyone needs guidance, and at the same time, we have an immense opportunity to contribute to thought leadership, making policies, rules as to how to make dispute resolution more better in a way and more efficient, more cost effective. What is the favorite part of my job? My job, as I mentioned, I've got the academic and a practitioner hat. I enjoy teaching and I have a strong bond with those who I teach because I have a passion towards this and I firmly believe that it is important to train and educate people professionally and ethically. Also, the other thing is that sitting in cases. I enjoy sitting as arbitrator in cases and doing cases as counsel, being blessed that they're high profile ones because then I appreciate the different cultures, getting to know different people, different laws and learning a lot. And that helps, again, shapes me as a human being and as a professional. And then you apply that going forward in other cases, which is always an enriching experience.